What's going on guys, it's Caleb and today we are going to do um, a little bit of review from our objects in JavaScript. Um, last video we learned quite a bit about objects and how they create them and so what. Today we're going to do our review on arrays and objects to see, or really to test our knowledge and see what we've learned. Um, just a quick note, if you guys aren't already in full screen, go ahead and full screen, 720p HD. Also, if you're not already at CodeAcademy.com, go ahead and go over to Code Academy. Along with the fact that if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, go down below. There's a link to my new Twitter account for this um, series of videos. Go ahead and follow me, and you could uh, tweet me anytime you want. I can get, I'll can i tweet you guys periodically, letting you know what's up. So, uh, all with all that aside, let's go ahead and get started with some heterogeneous arrays. Let's warm up with some arrays. Let's make an array that's vertible pot peruni of data types. So I guess that just means with a lot of different data types. Um, the instructions are create an array, my array. Its first element should be a number. Its second should be a boolean. Its third should be a string. And its fourth should be an object. You can add as many elements of any type as you like after these four. So you may be asking yourself an object. Well, you can't just pull an object out of the blue. You first have to declare the object. So let's go ahead and do that by saying var my obj or my object equals new. Remember new is a keyword. That's a brand new keyword that we learned in the previous video. And we're going to say new object and Put your little parentheses there. Remember to capitalize the O in object. Now it's going to give you a little warning to use literal notation, but you can just ignore that for right now. Now we're going to say var my array equals new array, and we declare an array by, uh, with the brackets. And the first data type is going to be a number, so I'm going to just say 15. The second data type should be a boolean, so I'm just going to say, go ahead and say true. And um, the third data type should be a string, so I'm going to go ahead and put my name. And the fourth data type should be our object, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass my uh, obj, referencing my object. And add a semicolon, and that looks pretty good. We have everything filled out that it declared in the instructions, so let's save and submit. And we get the green light to continue, so let's go on to the next lesson. Good! Now let's create a 2D array, not only that, but a 2D array that's jagged, or jagged. Remember, that means it's an array of an arrays, and the nested arrays aren't all the same length. For example, here we have a two-dimensional array, and as you can see, the first slot in our array is another array, but it has only two elements within that array. Now, in our second slot, we have another array, but it only has one element within that array. Therefore, this is a jagged array because the two nested arrays are different lengths. As you can see, this one has two elements, that one has one element, therefore, it's jagged. So, long story short, make an array called new array. It should be a two dimensional array, that is, it should contain two elements that in turn are arrays and jagged. Those two arrays should be of different lengths. So the ultimate kicker is to make one of your inner arrays contain an object. So like again in the previous uh, little exercise, you can't pull an object out of the blue. You must first declare the object. So var, once again, my object, we are creating new obj equals new object and you should get you should be used to this by now and now what we're going to say is var new array because that's the array name it wants us to create equals and here we're going to throw up an array and we're going to throw up another array and then within this array we're going to say like one two comma make sure you're outside of that array now you're in your first array now now we're going to create a new array, and we're, now we're going to pass in our object, my obj. Now, um, 
Oh, oh, no, what happened? Double, there we go. Okay. So now take a minute, just look at that. Now, as you can see here, we have an array. Then the first slot is another array. And then the th second slot is an object. So that's an array within an array. And it's also a jagged array because the two nested arrays are different lengths. This is two and this is one whenever you use the dot length command on it method. So if we go ahead and just submit this. We get the green light. Let's go on to the next lesson and reset our code. So nice work. Now let's do a little work with objects. We'll start by modifying an existing one. Add a key called interest or interest to my object. Give this key an array value. The array can contain whatever you like. So okay, okay. I think I got this. I think I can do this. So to add a new key, you just put the new key name. So um, we say interest, inter, interest, interest. And then I, I cannot talk. Inter, t e r e s t s. Okay, interest. It's been a long night. Now we're declaring a new array. Now we can say something like um, b ball because we are interested in b ball. We can say something like um, computers, because we love computers. And we can say something like JavaScript, because we love JavaScript. Now, if we go ahead and submit the code, let's see what we get. And we get the green light, so that is amazing. So let's go on to the next lesson. Now, creating your own objects. You're almost there. Last step, forge your very own object in the fires of Mount JavaScript. Create your own object called my own object. Give it whatever properties you like. Be sure to give it at least one. You can use either literal notation or object constructor. So in this one, we're going to use literal notation. And if you don't remember what literal notation is, it's just an easy way. Um, it's a lot easier than using the constructor because the constructor, you later on have to use the dot notation or the bracket notation to um, add in your keys. But... Um, here we're just going to go ahead and say literal notation. So um, var my oop, my own object, and um, we're just going to say equals and then curly braces, and I'm going to put a semicolon after my curly braces, and now to make our first key we can be like um, name. You know, I feel like we use name often a lot. Um, but you know it's a good one so I'm gonna go ahead and just say Caleb make sure to follow it by a comma now I'm just gonna add another key here and instead of using the age I can just say something like um, uh, school okay so this is gonna be something like oh what school you go to I'm gonna go ahead and put Cole because I go to Collegiate so that looks pretty good now let's go ahead and save and submit our code and see if we get the green light and we get the green light congratulations you finished this project which I don't know why they're calling this a project. Ever since they uh, got the new interface going on, they, the whole naming system has been off whack. You know what I mean? Like, the projects are now lessons, the lessons are now exercises. The exercises are just, like, gone. They never even use that word or term. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But if this helped you guys out, make sure to leave the video a like rating. And don't forget to uh, follow me on Twitter. Subscribe for more. And um, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. All right, guys, until next time, have a nice night. Peace.